Hey guys, it is Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the barriers and the complications that you have most likely experienced as an adult with a traumatic childhood. I've been talking a lot lately about traumatic childhoods, about traumatic relationships, about cluster B personalities. We just got done, I think it was last week, talking about histrionic personality traits and how it impacts relationships and communication. So in today's video, I want to highlight a couple of things that you most likely have experienced but haven't really been validated on. And so that's what this video is here to do. So let's just go ahead and jump in. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. For those who are subscribed and participating, thank you so much. And for those who are new, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you can stick around with us and be a part of our growing and validating community. The benefits for you in today's video is that I'm going to highlight a couple of characteristics and barriers. I would like to call them that have gotten in the way of your adult relationships, your adult functionality that has really created a rocky road for you, a roller coaster of emotions because of your history, because of your upbringing. But before we get into that, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Tamara and I'm an internationally and board certified trauma therapist, but I'm also licensed in mental health. So I work with children, adolescents and families as well as adults who are dealing with traumatic situations. This topic is pretty huge. Um, and I say it's pretty huge because I have so many emails that I get on a daily basis. And sometimes it's one day and I've gotten like 12 or 13 emails to go through. Um, and I really try to get to all your emails, by the way. Um, 12 to 13 emails that's talking about childhood trauma and how they're trying to cope and how the person's trying to deal with it. and you know, the adult relationships that they can't seem to navigate. So, you know, I think this is a pretty big topic and it's not something that's talked about a lot. And I wish we could change that, you know, especially on YouTube. There's videos about everything, you know, on psychology and, and not even on psychology, but I don't see a lot of videos that talks about childhood trauma and that really needs to change. So, you know, this is, this is a topic that a lot of people are struggling with. Um, and I think a lot of people need to be validated on because they believe that, you know, if they had a traumatic childhood, their adulthood shouldn't be impacted. But the reality is that, you know, we're molded and, and, and we are created into the person that we're going to be as adults over our child development, right? And over our adolescent development, we're becoming the adult that we're going to be as a child and as, and as an adolescent. So when things go wrong, it can either suppress or derail that proper development and it creates a major, major problem. So um, let's just go ahead and jump into some of the things that you may be impacted by and, and really don't even know it. So the first thing that I notice as a barrier in their adult relationships is poor and fluid boundaries. What I mean by that is that there is no uh, firm boundaries. The boundary line tends to be rather fluid and almost like a roller coaster. This individual may have a hard time setting boundaries in terms of their sexual space, in terms of their personal space, in terms of their values, in terms of their ethics, right? In terms of who they are as an individual, their culture, their race this individual may find it really difficult to stand when they need to stand, to really make a statement when they need to make a statement. Um, they may also run away from adult exchanges because they're afraid to be an adult, right? In their mind, they are still a child. In their emotions, they are still a child, but to the world, they are an adult. So it's really like they're a child in an adult body, right? They are a child emotionally and psychologically and mentally, um, but an adult physiologically. And so these individuals find it really difficult to stand their ground when they need to, to really put up boundaries, to really stand in their core values. They do whatever they need to do to be accepted and they do whatever they need to do to get what they want in life. And that usually leads down a very, very bad road, whether that's drug abuse or substance abuse or rape or dating multiple people, marrying repeatedly, making poor financial decisions. They do whatever they need to do. These individuals with poor or fluid boundaries to just make it in life because they really don't know who they are. They have no identity. 
Uh, the next thing that I notice is a constant lapse in judgment. There is no real judgment with these individuals. They end up in situations that are terrible. They can end up in trafficking situations. They can end up selling drugs. They can end up becoming prostitutes. They can end up in bad uh, career and job related relationships or instances where you know they are they are stealing money or they are engaging in white collar crimes or blue collar crimes, right? So these individuals uh, really suffer a lapse in judgment repeatedly they don't understand that they have to pause so that they can make the next step in an appropriate way they get stuck trying to make decisions and when they get stuck they give way to impulsivity to poor decision making and a loss of values and so you know this constant lapse in judgment really leads to a lot of emotional and psychological strain the next thing that I've noticed, guys, is a desperate need for affection. That desperate need for affection really turns into a desperate need to be wanted and a desperate need to be married and in a relationship. These individuals have a hard time being alone. They haven't resolved it. They have not resolved it within themselves, you know, to be alone. They, they, they feel that they constantly have to be with somebody else, a friend, a coworker, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. They have to be with somebody because if they are alone, they have to process their thoughts. They have to process their emotions. They have to process their mistakes. They have to think through things that they have done that's wrong. And so it's a whole lot easier to just be with somebody else and be distracted. So these individuals have a desperate need for affection. This desperate need for affection can also lead to repeated marriages and repeated sexual rendezvous because they're constantly in relationships looking for their self-worth. And when they don't get it from one relationship, they're definitely going to get it from another. So uh, the sad part about these individuals um, is that, you know, they don't know how to, again, put up that firm boundary and say, you know what, I'm not going to get into this relationship with you because you're married, you know. So these individuals have such a deep need for affection that they don't mind engaging in affairs. That's just who, who they can be sometimes. They're broken, and so they don't mind breaking up somebody else's happy home or somebody else's relationship. The next thing that I've noticed is repeated failures and mistakes. And again, these repeated failures and mistakes are because they have a desperate need for affection, they have poor fluid boundaries, um, or they have repeated lapses in judgment. And so, you know, they're going to continue to make mistakes. These kind of individuals often end up gambling all their money away and really breaking up the family home. Uh, they also have patterns of having um, uh, affairs. And so that breaks up the family home. They also have a history, most of them, of being um, abusive to their children in a sexual way, in a physical or emotional way. So these repeated mistakes and these repeated failures um, can really be severe. It's not, uh-oh, I had an accident on the road, or whoops, I paid that bill way too much money, or uh-oh, I gambled my money away. Uh, these repeated mistakes and failures tend to be rather huge. Um, so these individuals, you know, really, again, they end up down a very slippery slope and they don't know how to come back. All right. Next thing, guys, is role and identity confusion. These individuals really don't know who they are. They don't have an identity. So they get confused and they usually take on the personality characteristics of somebody that they either admire or somebody that they are close to. And you recognize from time to time, these individuals are not the same. They may talk differently, sound differently, wear clothing that's different than really what they would typically wear. They may change their hair. They may try to change their skin color by bleaching or making themselves darker with makeup these individuals don't just want to be a better them they want to be a different person completely so you're gonna see a really um, odd change or fluctuation in how they look talk and behave so role and identity confusion is something that happens uh, in adults who have had a traumatic childhood they don't want to associate with who they really are they don't want to associate with their traumatic childhood so they change who they are it's a lot easier it's less work in the long run so they think that's the best way to go. The next thing that I've noticed, guys, is emotional instability. And that emotional instability tends to be pretty frequent. I'm not talking emotional instabil instability like, you know, crying one day and crying all day. We're talking about getting angry, rage, intermittent explosive disorder. We're talking about doing things on a whim, being impulsive, really destroying the foundation of their life with their emotions. 
emotions are so fluctuating and the emotions are so labile. They switch, they change, they alternate so frequently that it's really difficult for them and other people to keep up. So these emotional outbursts and this emotional instability really does uh, take them for a ride and other people who are associated with them. The next thing that I've noticed and that research has supported is an addiction to drugs and alcohol or substance abuse, right? These individuals are often self-medicating and if it's not with sex, if it's not with prostitution, if it's not with money or gambling, it's usually with drugs. They attach to something that feeds them at the core and then they stick with it and they can't let go of it and again they're numbing the pain on the inside they're numbing their nebulous thoughts their nebulous psychological state they're numbing their emotional state and they're numbing who they who they feel that they are they don't want to know who they are because it's too painful so you know what they end up doing is um you know, attaching to drugs and alcohol or attaching to relationships that are not healthy. They're addictive. They are toxic. They are very destructive. And these individuals also jump into affairs and they find themselves addicted to pornography and addicted to sex. Uh, because again, it's, it's something that they're trying to self-medicate. So uh, that is something that you are likely to see. The next thing is a psychological reliance on relationships. And really that's a codependency. Codependent individuals tend to have traumatic childhoods. They never really learned what a safe and secure, healthy bond and attachment is. They never really learned what love truly is. And they never really learned what boundaries are. And so, you know, what they do is they attach to relationships and they don't know when to let go. They don't know when they're being abused. They don't know when they are struggling with, um, you know, the relationship. They just believe that being beat in a relationship is part of it. They believe that being sexually molested or raped in a, in a marriage or a relationship is part of it. They don't recognize that you are codependent. You are holding on to a relationship out of a toxic need to be loved. And so, you know, these individuals often end up right in my office or another therapist's office asking for tips on how to get out of an abusive relationship because they don't know how so uh, you know a traumatic childhood can really thrust you into very complicated uh, uh, situations and circumstances as an adult and you may find yourself in need of a lot of support in psychotherapy don't feel guilty about that or ashamed it's something that has happened to you it's a wound and that wound needs to be healed appropriately that wound needs some peroxides of neosporin and a good band-aid so that you can to be who you are if you just put a band-aid over it over that open wound you're not really getting to you know the the meat of what's going on you're not really getting to the foundation so don't blame yourself don't feel ashamed if this is you it's a process you just need to reach out for help and you just need to be you know motivated and ready to make those changes and I believe that clients can do it uh, you know if they have the right therapist if they have the right um, theoretical orientation here's what a theoretical orientation is which is basically the style and the worldview of the therapist so you need a proper theoretical orientation you need a proper worldview in your therapist you need a good trained therapist a specialist who can work with childhood trauma and I think you can do it it's tough and you're gonna experience all these things that I talked about in this video today but I really do believe that you can get through it so thank you so much for being with me today guys in this video i encourage you to give it a thumbs up if it was helpful and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around with us and stick around for more videos like they're free stay around guys so i encourage you to hit that subscribe button i will see you in the next video we're going to continue talking about these topics and november is coming up so guess what i'm going to be doing a live video in november right before thanksgiving about how to manage your family and especially in the world of covid19 so we're going to be talking about a lot coming up so stick around i'll see you soon Bye bye